I think it's important to the industry uh, on a number of levels. I think, as I mentioned earlier, <coughs> excuse me, from from a professional perspective, um, when I experience people performing that sort of screening as from a client point of view, it encourages me about their skills and their level of concern for me, their, uh, for my welfare and for the best outcomes for me. So it, it gives me a positive perspective of them as a professional right from the start. Um, <coughs> Also, I think it's very important, although I don't like to emphasise it overly from the legal perspective, in terms of making sure that you are covering your legal obligations as a professional. Um, I would rather think that we're doing it because we care and we want to provide that professional perspective, but it's secondarily, it's very important from that legal perspective. Screening is very important. Obviously, I do a lot in various capacities and predominantly with I suppose athletes that are already athletes rather than former athletes that decide at 40 they want to become athletes again. But um, the, main, the main purpose for me is, um, is to explain to them it's not a barrier because the VIS people will come to me and say, oh, you know, nervous because they think it's about me precluding them or excluding them from sport. And it would be the same with your guys filling in their six questions. And as soon as you explain that this isn't about excluding, it's about injury prevention, optimising their performance and making sure they don't have an illness that we didn't even know about. Um, and it's about getting to know the person or your client or my patient, however you want to look at it. And once you put it in that context, they are reassured and you probably get the information far more readily um, because, as I said, I think there's a perception that it's just about excluding you. And obviously with your clients, you probably get that even more than, than my level of athletes. But, um, you know, obviously it's a very important first step in the relationship. From um, my perspective, I'm probably harking back to, I can remember having uh, using the Parku back in 1980 and getting to that third question and thinking, I hope they don't take yes to any of this because I'm not prepared. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on a professional level, it's really a matter of uh, this process being able to increase clarity and certainty for the professional, for the client, uh, providing safety, the safety and appropriate prescription. But I think broadly for the, um, it really is that interface of education and information so you really it's your first opportunity to be able to uh, engage with the client gain their trust also include them in the information collation so that they're coming forward with more information and then all of a sudden they're a partner with you in the actual service and that's so critical and i think with any interface that you have with allied health or, <coughs> or medical practitioners and, and connection you've got all of that information to, to share with them as well. So I think the process, unfortunately, has been very much as, and again, Andy said, it's been a barrier. Seven questions, if I tick yes, I'm in trouble, or will, will I continue? To being more comprehensive and really the first positive step in a really comprehensive service. I think it's something where we can achieve relative uniformity across the country. And I think ultimately, it'll enable us to educate the consumer. So the consumer would expect to go through this process. At the moment, they don't. And I think that's the ultimate uh, objective, is to, to have this uh, be understood broadly um, throughout the public. And that means that we've got a better chance of being able to impact and increase physical activity. Working as an exercise physiologist in a clinical environment, I think it's really important that you as fitness professionals start to develop rapport with, with allied health professionals as well as your client. And I think this is an opportunity for you to open up your networks um, as working in the, in, in the clinical context, I mean, my, my, my goal is to communi communicate what I'm doing with, with the client that has been referred to me from a GP, what I'm going to do with them so they can build up a medical record on that particular client. So if you are able to build respect from the medical and allied health professional group, then that also, I think, will help you get referrals from them to actually uh, assist their clients actually meet their exercise goals. So I think that's really important and I think it's part of that develop, development professional network that you can use the screening tool as a formal mechanism to actually develop that <coughs> network. The second thing is about developing client rapport. Um, I always use my initial consultations to understand them as a client as much as just trying to find out as much about any medical issues that may be involved that might influence my exercise prescription. 
So it's about building rapport about their social, their social background. You know, are they going to be able to pay for your services? They, what influence do they have in terms of exercise compliance? Do they have somebody who's encouraging them? Or do they have somebody who's saying, you're too fat, you need to go and see an exercise professional? All those sorts of things. Do you, or is it really about trying to make sure that you have a development of a, a contract, if you like, between you and the client to actually meet their exercise and health goals? So I think that's a, a really important issue.